اهلا بحضراتكم يا دكاترة في الجزء الاول من مراجعة الجزء العملي الخاص بمقرر علم الطفيليات باراسيتولوجي بكلية الصيدلة الجامعة الحديثة للتكنولوجيا والمعلومات MTI Welcome doctors to the Parasitology course practical revision part 1 of Faculty of Pharmacy Modern University for Technology and Information MTI so let's start we have classified parasites into three types helminths or worms which are multicellular parasites protozoa which are unicellular parasites and arthropods we will begin talking about helminths or worms helminths or worms were classified according to their shape into two classes or two types flat worms or platy helminths and round worms flat worms ديدان المسطحة round worms ديدان الاستوانية flat worms or platy helminths were classified into two classes class trematoda uh, or flukes their common name is flukes and class testoda or tapeworms class trematoda طبعا بالعربي اللي هي الديدان المثقبة علشان دي الديدان اللي جسمها بيبقى فيه suckers لو احنا فاكرين خلاص بيبقى عندها suckers oral و ventral sucker و الهيتروفيس هيتروفيس كان عندها third genital sucker اما الكلاس سيستودا اللي هي الديدان الشريطية تيب ورمز The round worms were under the class نيماتودا الديدان الاستوانية تحت class نيماتودا اللي هي الديدان الخيطية طبعا الديدان المسطحة او الفلات ورمز اللي هي class تريماتودا و class سيستودا دي بتبقى عاملة زي الورقة بالظبط Okay. Uh, first, the flat worms or platy helminths. What is the main difference between class Trematoda and class Cystoda? The main difference is that class Trematoda have unsegmented body, while class Cystoda have segmented body. يعني class Trematoda أو جسمها بيبقى unsegmented أو entire يعني جسم كله حاجة واحدة خلاص أما الكلاس سيستودا اللي هي ديدان الشريطية جسمها بيبقى منقسم إلى segments أجزاء اللي هي immature segment mature segment and gravid segment يبقى ده الفرق الأساسي ما بينهم يبقى this is the first difference the first main difference between class trematoda and class سيستودا class trematoda have unsegmented body while class cystoda have segmented body the second difference of course is the presence of suckers but um, also class cystoda have suckers so this is not a main difference the main difference is the whether the body is segmented or not in this video we are going to talk about class trematoda في الفيديو ده هنتكلم على class trematoda. We have three parasites under class trematoda. The first parasite is Schistosoma species. The second parasite is Heterophis heterophis, and the and the third parasite is Fascia species. طيب. يبقى احنا عندنا three parasites دول تحت class trematoda. Uh, عايزين نتفق على حاجة الأول طبعا احنا اللايف سايكلز مش علينا حفظهم جميل طيب ايه اللي احنا مطالبين بيه في الكورس العملي زي ما كنا بنشرح لحضراتكم دايما احنا علينا ال points of comparisons دي ال items دي جميل طيب فهنحاول نعمل ربط ما بينهم علشان يسهل المذاكرة so uh, we have to say that uh, we do not have to memorize the life cycles of parasites 
but we have to know these points of comparisons or these items for all the parasites so we are going to make a connection between these items so that we can study them what is this uh, connection or this logical pattern we will begin with the definitive or the final host what is the definitive or the final host it is the host in which the parasite undergoes uh, adulthood or becomes adult and undergoes sexual reproduction and the definitive or the final host is mainly men in most of the parasites so this is the definitive or the final host this is the first item how uh, was this host infected so the second item will be the infective stage what is the infective stage it is the life it is the stage in the life cycle of the parasite which infects the definitive host so this is the infective stage the stage which infects the definitive or the final host the infective stage has two items connected to it a past item and a future item I mean uh, the past item is where it came from I mean the intermediate host what is the intermediate host the intermediate host is the host in which the worm or the parasite undergoes larval development or a sexual reproduction until it reaches the infective stage so the intermediate host is the host inside which the infective stage is formed okay this is the past of the infective stage the future of the infective stage is how it enters the body of the definitive host we mean the mode of infection or mode of transmission and in this mode of infection or mode of transmission uh, we should mention the name of the infective stage for example in case of schistosoma hematobia the infective stage is cercaria the mode of infection mode of transmission is direct skin penetration of cercaria during swimming we should mention the infective stage in the mode of infection or mode of transmission so we have two things connected to the infective stage it's past the intermediate host in which it was formed and its future which is the mode of infection or mode of transmission how it enters the body of the definitive or final host after entering the definitive or the final host the uh, parasite goes to its habitat what's meant by habitat habitat is the location of the adult worm it's the location in which the worm reaches adulthood this is the habitat okay after reaching habitat and after reaching adulthood sexual reproduction takes place forming mainly eggs these eggs mainly are passed with the stools or feces of the definitive or final host these eggs are usually the diagnostic stage diagnostic stage what is the diagnostic stage it is the stage in the life cycle of the parasite through which we can diagnose the patient we can say that this patient is infected with with this parasite this is the diagnostic stage which is mainly eggs in stools i should mention the diagnostic stage and where i find it and finally the name of the disease which is the name of the parasite followed by the suffix the suffix yeses i a s i s so the uh, logical pattern or the pattern uh, of studying these points of comparison are number one the definitive or the final host which is mainly men or mostly men the infective stage which entered the body of the definitive host and caused the infection and this infective stage has a past and a future the past is the intermediate host the future is the mode of infection or mode of transmission 
Then after entering the body of the definitive host, the worm reaches adulthood in the habitat. Then after reaching adulthood, sexual reproduction takes place, forming eggs, mainly eggs or mostly eggs, which uh, go out with stools and this is the diagnostic stage and finally the disease name يبقى ايه هو الترتيب اللي احنا هنمشي بيه واحنا بنتكلم على البرازايتس دي اول حاجه الديفينيتيف او الفاينل هوست تاني حاجه الانفكتيف ستيج اللي بتخش جسم الديفينيتيف هوست ده والانفكتيف ستيج قلنا ليها ماضي وليها مستقبل الماضي بتاعها هي جت منين او اتكونت فين اللي هو الانترميديت هوست اللي هي اتكونت فيه والمستقبل بتاعها هتخش ازاي الديفينيتيف هوست هتخش ازاي اللي هو المود اوف انفكشن او المود اوف ترانسميشن طيب دخلت هتوصل للهابيتات بتاعها تبقى ادلت تعمل سيكشوال ريبرودكشن تنزل الاجز الاجز تنزل مينلي في الغالب في معظم البرازايتس اللي بنتكلم عليها الاجز بتنزل مع الستول ويبقى هو ده الدايجنوستيك ستيج واخر حاجه اسم الديزيز اوكي ليتس ستارت ويز كلاس تريماتودا ان كلاس تريماتودا We have three parasites: Schistosoma, Heterophis, and Fasciola. The type or the common name Schistosoma are called blood trematoda. Why? Because the live or the adult worm lives in blood. Heterophis, Heterophis, is called intestinal trematoda because the adult lives in the intestine, in the small intestine. And fascia is called liver trematoda because the adult form lives in the bile duct. Okay, let's begin. The definitive or the final host in the three parasites is men, as we can see. Then the infective stage. What is the infective stage? If we remember the general characters of class trematoda, we will remember that all the infective stage in all trematoda is encysted metacercaria encysted metacercaria metacercaria inside cyst and the exception was schistosoma in schistosoma the infective stage is cercaria okay uh, the infective stage has a past and a future the past is the intermediate host in which it is formed or in which it was formed the Intermediate host in class trematoda are or is snail. Uh, we will see snails only in this class in class trematoda. The snails are only in the class D. The intermediate host will be snails in class D, but not in class trematoda. In Schistosoma, in Schistosoma, of course, in Schistosoma we have two species: Schistosoma hematobium and Schistosoma mansonii. In Schistosoma hematobium, in the case of Schistosoma hematobium, the intermediate host is called Bolinus truncatus snail. Bolinus truncatus snail. While in case of Schistosoma mansonii, the intermediate host is Bimflaria alexandrina snail. And uh, to remember them, hematobium has a great number of letters, so they will have the smaller number of letters of snail, which is Bolinus truncatus. And Mansonai is the opposite. Mansonai, the number of letters in the word Mansonai are small, so the number of letters in Bimflaria are large. Bimflaria alexandrina. In case of Heterophis, Heterophis, and Fasciola species, uh, both have two intermediate hosts primary and secondary. The primary intermediate host is usually a snail, and the secondary intermediate host is not. Okay, in heterophis heterophis, the primary intermediate host is called Pyrenella conica snail. In Fasciola, we have two species: Fasciola hepatica and Fasciola gigantica. Uh, in both species, the primary intermediate host is Limnia snail. In case of Fasciola hepatica, it's called Limnia truncatula snail, while in case of Fasciola gigantica, it's called Limnia cleudi snail. Okay, the secondary intermediate host, in case of Heterophis heterophis, is Bolti and Bori fish. We can remember them: Heterophis, then fish. Heterophis have fish. Then the secondary intermediate host, in case of Heterophis heterophis, is Bolti and Bori fish. While the secondary intermediate host, in case of uh, fascia 
species are fresh water plants this is the past of the infective stage the future of the infective stage which is the mode of infection or mode of transmission in case of schistosoma hematobium the mode of infection or mode of transmission is direct skin penetration of cercaria during swimming we should mention the name of the infective stage in case of mode of infection or mode of transmission in the case of Heterophis heterophis, the mode of infection or mode of transmission is ingestion of the secondary intermediate host, injection of raw fish, raw bolti and bully fish, containing insisted metacercaria, which is the infective stage. In case of fascia species, the mode of infection or mode of transmission is ingestion of the secondary intermediate host containing the infective stage, ingestion of raw water cress or raw fresh water plants containing the insisted metacercaria. We said that after entering the uh, body of the definitive host or final host, the parasites reach adulthood in the habitat, which is the location of adult worm. What is the habitat of schistosoma? Of course, it will be the veins because schistosoma are blood trematoda. In case of schistosoma hematobium, the habitat is uh, the habitat is veins of urinary bladder. While in case of Schistosoma monsoni, the habitat is veins of large intestine or colon. In case of heterophis, 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 heterophis is intestinal trematoda, so the habitat or location of other worm is small intestine. Fascia hepatica and fascia gigantica are liver trematoda, so the habitat will be bile duct of liver. Then, or finally, the name of the disease in case of schistosoma hematobium because its habitat is veins of urinary bladder so we will call it urinary bilharziasis of course we know that the schistosoma is the bilharzia so the name of the disease is urinary bilharziasis while in case of schistosoma mansoni because the habitat is the veins of large intestine or colon the disease is called intestinal schistosomiasis schistosomi or intestinal bilharziasis. Okay, it's very important in the habitat to remember that the habitat of schistosoma is veins, not the urinary bladder or not the large intestine or colon. It's veins because they are blood trematoda. The name of the disease in case of heterophis heterophis is heterophiasis, and in case of fasciola, it's called fasciolysis. These are the items of comparison for class Trematoda. Now we are going to see the spots of class Trematoda. Of course, if we remember the general characters of class Trematoda, we will remember that uh, all Trematoda are hermaphrodite. What is meant by hermaphrodite? They are not separate sex. Hermaphrodite يعني مخنث يعني ما فيش ميل لوحده في ميل لوحده زي البني آدم لا الكائن الواحد في الميل والفيميل reproductive systems Hermaphrodite means that the same organism contains male and female reproductive organs or reproductive systems So all trematoda are hermaphrodite except schistosoma species or bilharizia in schistosoma, schistosoma is separate sex. It has male and a female. The male schistosoma species is thick and short and curved. Thick and short. The male schistosoma species is thick and short. While the female schistosoma species is long and thin. يبقى الميل شيسوسوما سبيشيز بيبقى تخين وقصير الفيميل شيسوسوما سبيشيز الفيميل شيسوسوما سبيشيز بتبقى تخينة بتبقى آسف رفيعة وطويلة يبقى الميل تخين وقصير الفيميل طويلة ورفيعة In case of heterophis heterophis and fascia species both are hermaphrodite meaning that they have the organism contains both male and female sex organs the adult heterophis heterophis is pear shaped like this. Shabah il kumetra. Adult heterophis heterophis. In case of fascia hepatica and fascia gigantica, gigantica 
means giant or remembers us with giant so fascia gigantica is larger in size than fascia hepatica uh, both fascia gigantica and fascia hepatica are seen with the naked eye not seen under the microscopes yani ben shofhum ala slide we see them on slides with our naked eyes ben shofhum ba'inina al mujarrada ala slides mish taht al microscope wa taman al fashla gigantica tiba akbar min al fashla hepatica the other fashla gigantica uh, has parallel margins parallel margins yani gana bitaatha bitba parallel li ba'd bi shakl da while the adult fascia hepatica has converging margins يعني تبقى الجناب بتاعتها تبقى تخينه كده محدبه كده convex كده so this is the main difference between adult fascia gigantica and adult fascia hepatica the adult fascia gigantica is larger in size with parallel margins while adult fascia hepatica is smaller in size with converging margins okay يبقى ده الفرق الجوهري ما بين الفشلة جايكانتيكا وفشلة هيباتيكا جايكانتيكا من جاينت أكبر في الحجم وكمان بتبقى شكلها رشيق كده المارجنز بتاعتها بتبقى باراليل إنما الفشلة هيباتيكا تبقى تخينة وصيارة كده خلاص والجناب بتاعتها المارجنز بتاعتها بتبقى كونفيرجينج أو كونفيكس كده أوكي شيستسوما كابلينج واتس مين باي كابلينج it means that the female schistosoma is inside the gynecophoric canal of the male schistosoma for sexual reproduction to take place. This is the female and this is the male. يعني ال female بتبقى موجودة في الجينيكوفوريك كانال بتاعة الميل قناة اللي جوا أو اللي في البطن بتاعة الميل عشان يحصل السيكشوال ريبرودكشن يبقى كابلينج شيستوسوما كابلينج مينز بوث ميل اند فيميل شيستوسوما ار بريزنت ذا انفكتيف ستيج از شيستوسوما سيركاريا ذا شيستوسوما سيركاريا هاز الونجيتد هيد اند فوركد تيل Uh, like two fingers in its tail. يبقى مهمة أوي الشيستوسوما سيركاريا يبقى عندها راسها متولة كده has a good head وعندها فرك التيل ده لها عامل آخره زي صباعين كده. While the fascia cercaria has a round head and its tail is not forked. It has uh, no fingers in its tail. يعني إيه؟ ديلها بيبقى ما فيهوش الصباعين دولت وراسها تبقى مدورة خلاص it has round head not elongated okay as for the diagnostic stage if we remember the general characters of class trematoda we will remember that the eggs of class trematoda are oval in shape like this oval in shape and have an operculum operculum is like a cover Okay, covering the egg. يبقى كل الإجز خلاص بتاع الكلاستر ماتودا تبقى أوفل خلاص وعندها ال إيه ال operculum أو الغطا ده خلاص. This operculum is either opened like this or closed or it may not be found. ممكن نشوف إجز ما فيهاش ال operculum أو الغطا ده. The only exception is schistosoma egg. Schistosoma egg is oval. But with no operculum. Instead of operculum, it has spine. Shoka. This spine is either terminal, nihaya. In case of schistosoma hematobium egg, hematobium has the letter T, so its egg has a terminal spine. In the end, the spine is in the end of the egg. While schistosoma mansonai egg has lateral spine. Yani shoka geni beya. Let's add. Uh, this uh, the side of the egg, not at the end of the egg. So, Shasoma hematobium egg has a terminal spine at the end of the uh, egg, while Shasoma mesona egg has a lateral spine at the side of the egg. If Shasoma hematobium egg, the spine shoka to adha terminal nihaiya, خلاص. The terminal fi half t, zayil hematobium fi half t. Inna man mesona el shoka to adha tibal lateral ganibiya. Okay. The heterophis heterophis egg. These are the smallest eggs that we will see in our course. 
دي اصغر اجه هنشوفها في المنهج عندنا خلاص دي ار اوفر ان شيب دي ار اوفر ان شيب وي كان سي ذا ابيركولم هير بات اتس نوت اوبفيوس اول ذا تايم يعني ممكن ممكن نشوف ال ال الاوبيركولم اللي هو الغطا بس مش شرط نشوفه هي بتبقى اصغر اجه بشوفها شكلها بيضاويه وشبه اللب الاسمر اوكي Uh, we may see, we might see the uh, operculum, or we might see the uh, place of the operculum, the place in which the operculum is found. The fascia egg is the largest egg that we will see in our course. It's oval in shape, and we can see the operculum either opened like this or closed, or the operculum may not be found, but we uh, can see the place of the operculum. Uh, which is a line here without this part without the operculum يعني the fascia egg is opposite to the heterophys egg heterophys egg is the smallest oval egg that we will see in our course while fascia egg is the largest egg uh, largest oval egg that we will see in our course the fascia egg أكبر egg هشوفها في المنهج عندي بيبقى اوفل بيبقى عندها اوبركلا من الغطا بتاعها بيبقى موجود كده بتبقى يا اما مفتوحه زي ما احنا شايفين او مقفوله او ممكن ما تبقاش موجوده خالص. اوكي. The intermediate host Bolinus trinketus the intermediate host of Schistosoma hematobium and we did not see it in our lab. ما شفناش السنيل ديت القوقعه ديت في المعمل بتاعنا. But we saw Bimflaria alexandrina snail. شفناها. This is the intermediate host of Schistosoma mansoni. Its shape is spiral like this. تبقى ايه شكلها حلزوني. The Bimflaria alexandrina كانها من اسكندرية تبقى حلزونية كده. Okay. The snail of Hydrophis hydrophis is Pyrenella conica snail. Pyrenella conica conica like conical because it's conical in shape. يعني شكلها مخروطي بالمنظر ده شكلها اسمها بايرينيلا كونيكا سنيل This is the intermediate host the primary intermediate host of heterophys heterophys The limniacaliudi snail which is the intermediate host of fascula gigantica has this shape with with its opening uh, to the right side فتحتها تبقى ناحية اليمين الليمنياكاليودي اللي هي الانترميديت هوست بتاعت فاشيلا جاكنتيكا بتبقى بالمنظر ده وفتحتها ناحية اليمين اوكي and of course in heterophys heterophys insisted metacercaria in undersorted fish this is the infective stage of heterophys heterophys we can see the uh, skin or tissue of fish and this A circle is the insisted metacercaria of heterophys heterophys. Insisted metacercaria. We will see a tissue and a, a circle in the middle of this tissue. This is the insisted metacercaria in undersalted fish. Okay. Uh, that's the end of part one of parasitology practical course revision. يبقى دي كده نهاية الجزء الأول من مراجعة الجزء العملي الخاص بمقرر علم الطفيليات باراسيتولوجي